Today we maliciously comply with a company that refuses to give a raise. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, spicy beef. I had a friend that liked hot food and we would go out to Chinese restaurants almost every Sunday after church. They were the only ones open on Sundays in Tonga. We would always go out and got basically the same type of food. Orange or lemon chicken and Kung Pao beef or broccoli beef, etc. Since we always had the same food, we would always go to different restaurants, so at least there was a little more variety in the available dishes. And in case a restaurant was closed or busy, etc. It's important to note that I like spicy food. Spices are the spice of life, and hot is good. But I also have some issues that mean I can only handle a certain level of spice without it bothering me, and I don't like pain. So eating something that makes me cry and my nose run isn't something I enjoy anyway. My friend has no such problems, and to my knowledge had not, at least to that point, reached a max spicy level. So we had gone to this one restaurant the week before and really liked it. So the next week we went back. Now as we're ordering the same stuff we always seem to get, I say I wanted the spicy beef. My friend chimes in and says, but make it hot. Last time I could barely tell there was even a pepper involved. This was like 8 years ago so I forget the exact words but basically told the waitresses to tell the chef he didn't know how to make food and he was a wimp for not using more peppers. Malicious compliance, when the waitress comes out with the food, she has all the normal food that's edible and then she brings a pile of spicy beef that is covered with peppers. And I mean the tiny little red peppers that'll lay out normal persons if they eat 25% of one. There was like 30 or 40 of those on the plate and there was no mistaking that they were there and that they were influencing the heat of the dish. I was actually able to eat around the peppers but my friend seemed to enjoy them. Though as I recall he did leave quite a few on the plate. Honestly if your friend enjoys some really spicy food, this might have been a wondrous gift of whole new levels then. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, threaten to kick me too many times because you're petty? Fine. I called my toxic manipulator's bluff, and she was pissed. So backstory, cousin met a girl, we instantly hit it off, cue a few years later I move in with them to get out of my mother's toxic, codependent hold, along with the medical benefits of having a regional hospital in my town. I grew up a very ill child for one reason or another. Me and cousin's now wife have been best friends for several years now to the point their daughter calls me auntie. I love that role as I can't have my own kids, a story for another time maybe. So about 7 years into living with them, not too many issues aside from the growing pains of learning to live with someone else, we move a mutual friend in to help her out while she divorces her hubby, low income and we had the space. Obviously more tension as there's more clashing personalities, but we all get along mostly. Years of intentional exclusion and bullying from school and family has left me desperate to have anyone that would be willing to hang out with me, thus causing me to tolerate a lot more crap than I should. This friendship included toward the end, so I'd spent about a collective year of her consistently threatening to kick me out over little stuff, bigger things I understood completely, constantly being berated by them and other roomies. Finally, a year and a half ago, something inside of me snapped and I couldn't tolerate it or cope with the 24-7 gaslighting, bullying, and silencing of my attempt at standing up for myself and genuinely feeling unwelcome or wanted in my own residence. So the last few times of the threat to be kicked out in pettiness, I called their bluff and found a different place. A few too many, why don't you just give your notice and move out? And nobody cares about you or your opinion. I was done. I by no means was perfect either, but I was sick of being constantly micromanaged to the point that I didn't feel like I was allowed to pee without announcing it or questioned why I breathed a certain way. I'm asthmatic and have ADHD, so I breathe shallow naturally and sometimes remember this to take a few deep breaths that sometimes sound like a sigh comparatively. I was so stressed out and anxiously awaiting the next moment I got interrogated for something, so when I broke and decided to take up that offer of moving out. While I didn't handle it the best way, I got blasted and degraded for over an hour over text and longer in person when she barged into my room telling me about how horrible of a person I am for moving out, how selfish I am for moving out and how they, now former bestie that I cut ties to, 
We're such a good friend and I had it easy there and you'll never find a place cheaper with everything included. Guess what? I did. I found a better place with one roomie instead of four and I'm much happier having to pay for my own groceries. And I've come out of a very dark place in my life. As by the time I moved out, I was practically a recluse and shut down to a mere shell of my former bubbly and outgoing self. My mental health took a huge hit because of these behaviors, and I was borderline wanting to end everything again by the time I left that toxic environment. She was pissed I called her bluff and refused to tolerate their manipulative, gaslighting, toxic butts. I'm far better off after a little over a year of being out of there. Oh, and not to mention the amount of times I was accused of being a promiscuous, drug-addicted, attention-seeking who are, to which I have never been either. At that time, I'd been celibate for like six years by choice and never done any illicits before moving out. Never been happier than I am now. You could have a friend that you think you are ride or die with, but upon moving in with them, that is the true test of that friendship. I think if you're just not compatible in a shared living space, almost any friendship can just blow up. Our next story is, you want strict compliance, Mr. Food Service Driver? You get it. After undergrad, I moved to Texas to manage with a mostly local chain of Tex-Mex restaurants. At one of my first training stores, I was assigned a month in the kitchen to learn their back of house process. As I grew up in the business and had worked during college for a very large casual dining chain, I was familiar and skilled in all of the general aspects of running this type of kitchen. However, it was a good opportunity to learn the particular aspects of this company's operations. After driving from Northeast Dallas to Grapevine early one morning, I greeted the driver, retrieved my clipboard, and started supervising the unload. He worked fast and had the truck unloaded in about 30 minutes or so. I knew I had a good 60 to 90 minutes left organizing, date dotting, rotating, breaking down boxes, etc., and was happy to sign him off so he could get on his way while I continued putting away the order. For reference, this is how I'd always done this and never had any problem. As I'm working through the delivery, I notice we're short one case of 20 count shrimp. Obviously that's quite a bit of money, but those types of things happen and, in my experience, the process was to call the vendor promptly and let them know. Most times they would contact the driver, he'd find it on the truck and bring it later, or they would credit our order. But not this time. This time the vendor tells me that they have a strict policy about this, and since I'd signed the order they didn't feel obligated to credit us. I told them that seems like a bad policy when dealing with a restaurant that was doing around $70,000 a week in sales, this is 1995, and paid promptly. They didn't seem to care. So next week I again meet the driver on delivery day. Everything was going pretty much the same except this week when he handed me the delivery form to sign. I informed him that since we were short last week and his company didn't want to work with us, I wasn't signing anything until I had everything counted and i couldn't count everything until i worked through the large pile since he couldn't leave without getting a signature he got to stand on our back dock until i was done i may have been a bit extra thorough counting and organizing that day because he was fuming when i got back to him about an hour and a half later with a signed form i assume that this made him late enough to miss several deliveries that day as many restaurants won't accept delivery between 10 and 2 p.m but I know he was late to several stops because his company called me the next day and said they couldn't work this way. They quickly agreed that if we cooperated and acted in good faith on future orders, they would return the favor. We received credit for the missing shrimp on our next delivery. I mean, yeah, how about, you know, not stealing? OP brought up the topic of cooperation quite a bit here, but they literally just did not deliver the product and still expected this company to pay full price. Isn't that just stealing? This next story is working at my level. A few years ago, I'd been recently promoted. I was expecting a higher promotion given the fact that I was working at that higher level. How do I know that I was operating at a higher level? Because I was covering for the individuals that couldn't get through their daily work. These individuals were getting paid $20,000 more to not do their job. My manager knew this at the time because I'd set up multiple meetings letting them know the work that I was doing. I was promised a promotion at this higher level by said manager. To be clear, I wasn't expecting $20,000 more. The new level minimum was only $5,000 over what I was making. Q 
meeting with HR and manager, in which I'm told that I was not completing the functions that I said I was completing, and I should only be doing the functions within my new job profile. If I was doing any of these functions, I should stop. Background here, this is financial operations, so we're talking about people's or clients' money. This isn't something that you mess around with and make errors or delay a process that could cost a client money that they would then push to my employer. Additionally, this is a huge reputational risk with clients to just not complete a processing function for them and could impact future contracts. I did exactly as they stated. I pulled only my client's work. I processed only the functions that were assigned to me for the most part. I still went above and beyond with assisting others within my same level, but not the higher level processing and clients. I don't mean to gloat here, but I was great at this job. Some of those upper level clients started reaching out directly to me, asking why I wasn't working on their account anymore, and the complaints started rolling in. I know you all are hoping that the manager came around and promoted me, but you would be wrong. They eventually restructured the processing so these clients would fall within my job profile. As part of the overall restructuring, we were to be merged within another team. This manager also assumed that they would be given a promotion, but due to the overall client satisfaction, senior management decided to hire another individual to that role. The new manager really knew how to run her teams and has been a great mentor to me ever since then. My direct manager eventually quit and went over to a competitor. I've now had four promotions in five years, and I'm well above my old manager's role. The company overall is a great place, but it only takes that one crappy person to negatively impact your career. I think back on that interaction often, as that manager leaving the company ultimately skyrocketed my overall career. Hopefully this story inspires others to stand up for themselves. You might not see the impact immediately, But if you can wait it out, your time might come. I definitely think it's sad how OP highlights that if this person was given the opportunity to stay in a capacity where they continue to call the shots, OP could be stunted as long as they continue to work there. I think it highlights the importance of just kind of feeling around as to what other opportunities may be out there. Our next story is, won't give me a raise? I'll claim all the overtime I can then. Many years ago, I worked in the control room of a private ambulance company. I was working overnight, which meant I never really saw a manager and had to do everything on my own. Literally, I would be the only one in the office. Then the company won some new contracts and all of a sudden I had actual co-workers. But very quickly, I found out they were earning more than me, about a thousand British pounds per year difference. And there were two of them doing about two thirds of the work I was doing alone. So I did what anyone would do and asked if I could get a pay bump to match my new colleagues, only to be told no. So instead, I went and looked closely at my contract, which stated I was only paid for 11 hours a night, with the expectation of an unpaid hour for the overnight approximation of lunch. But you see, dear reader, I'd been working for a full 12 hours because I had no one to cover me. And technically I still didn't because different contracts and areas of operation. So I looked up the overtime policy in the forms. I printed off a stack and filled them in to cover my entire shift pattern and claim for my hours lunch that I couldn't take. Then I made sure they were submitted every week to get my extra pay. Eventually they gave me my raise but I carried on claiming until they hired someone to work with me and I couldn't claim any more. But the damage was done, and the crappy manager that couldn't understand why I wanted equal pay for an equal job moved on. It still makes me smile to think how much money I must have cost them for trying to screw me over. Although OP says this is malicious compliance, I think it's just the literal right thing to do. Don't work for free, unless you really want to or you're helping out a friend or family. This next story is leaving the company so there's no point in furthering my learning. Okay. Some background, I'm a female maintenance engineer, have been for 8 years with high level qualifications. We are permanently short staffed, we run teams of 2 and 3 when we were meant to have teams of 4. For unrelated reasons, I got myself another job and handed my notice in. Now my compliance. My team leader, let's call him L, is a bit of a jerk towards me but mostly tolerable. When L found out I'd handed my notice in, he got a lot worse towards me. 
there was a job that needed doing that I hadn't completed for a while, so I asked to be a part of the job. L responded with, Well, there's no point really, you're leaving. It's not like you need to learn it. Q compliance. I sat on my backside for the rest of that shift set, only doing work I knew how to do so I wasn't learning anything. L got into trouble with his manager for the work not getting completed, and his manager used to be my manager, so we get on very well. Hence why the rest of the teams didn't get into trouble. I leave in six shifts, so I don't really care. Good luck, L. I don't think it takes a genius to realize this is really just one big sinking ship at this point. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.